My grandfather told me, his grandfather used to tell him, that's how you run a business. Since 1875, that is a guiding principle of how we run our business today. Our business has grown over the last 135 years, but from generation to generation, our founding principle will never change. John T. Hartzell entered into military service in 1864 during the Civil War. Beginning in 1875, Hartzell was an innovative company that started from a sawmill to a wagon builder. Back in 1880, at the start of the workday, the sound of a brass whistle could be heard over the walnut mill. The whistle was a gift given to John Hartzell by his 15 employees five years after the start of business. George joins his father's business in about 1875 and the company became known as John T. Hartzell and Son, manufacturer of lumber and farm wagons. In 1890, he purchased the company from his father for $25,000. A bold move for a man of only 25. The company was renamed to George W. Hartzell and moved from Greenville, Ohio, to Pequa, where he built a more modern sawmill. George W. Hartzell, often referred to the walnut business as Good Walnut Hartzell. A process of steaming was developed by the company to turn sapwood of white walnut into a uniform brown, the same color as heartwood. This enabled the company to market the sapwood, which was formerly worthless. The market for walnut was England and Germany, and most of the wood was exported. Robert Hartzell pioneered the steaming of walnut that still takes place today. In 1915, the Hartzell veneer business supplied over 100 million feet of veneer annually. Robert Hartzell befriends Orville and Wilbur Wright, who suggested that Hartzell use its own walnut to manufacture propellers. Aunt Ida ran the financial end of the business for the Pickway Walnut Mill. In 1917, Robert built an airport on Wilmington Pike due to his interest in aviation and leased it to Johnson. By 1917, Hartzell is supplying Liberty aircraft propellers for the war effort along with walnut gun stocks. In 1924, Hartzell built an airplane, FC-1, constructed from plywood, which wins first place in its class at the International Air Races in Dayton. In 1925, they built a second airplane, FC-2, which won first place in St. Louis. Hertzl's sponsored baseball team wins title. In 1927, we built our first industrial propeller fan that was 20% more efficient than any ordinary flat blade venting fan on the market. In 1930, there were 15 Hartz log buyers throughout the area that negotiated on the price of timber we were purchasing. Upon the death of his father, Robert Hartzell took over the company in 1933 and forms the Hartzell Propeller Division. In 1940, a plastic material called Hartzite is developed for the use in the construction of cooling tower fans. In 1942, with World War II in hand, Hartzell supported the war effort by delivering an aluminum blade to the government and expand our product, doubling its size. At the end of World War II, we shift our propeller division into offering controllable propellers for light aviation. Early fan manufactured by the Propeller Fan Division. In 1952, the first quarter century dinner was held at the main office for several years and then moved to Green Island Farm in Fort Laramie. The first fiberglass fan was manufactured and shipped in 1958. In 1969, George William becomes Hartzell's new CEO and in that same year, the company purchased Decatur Industries a manufacturer of walnut accessories for smokers. In 1967, the fan division opened a plant in Aberdeen, Mississippi to build stock for the stocking program. In 1970, the fan division opens up its Portland, Indiana plant for additional manufacturing capability. Hartzell expands 
again in 1970 with the purchase of North Carolina face veneer, 1971 with the purchase of Arkansas face veneer, and then in 1975 started American Woodcrafters to sell kit furniture. In 1984, Tom Hartzell assumed the duties of Hartzell CEO. Jim Hartzell was named CEO of Hartzell in 1988. In 1995, we invest in a state-of-the-art lumber handling system, followed in 1998 with a major expansion of the lumber dry kiln system. In 2001, Jimmy Hartzell becomes CEO, and in 2002, expands the lumber capacity for exporting walnut by adding seven kilns.